traditional craftsmanship of Mongolian gear and associated customs. have created a variety of shelter during the histories and development states while incorporating their lifestyles and traditional culture, be it settled or nomadic. Mongols, while practicing pastoral nomadism for millennia across Asia, have created the exquisite shelter called Gir, the foundation of the nomadic lifestyle and culture. Creating and developing the system for traditional craftsmanship of the Mongol gear have ensured the suitable existence of nomadic culture up to date in the modern world. The Mongolian gear trade as a micro thermally efficient space and effective lightning and air conditioning. The dome-shaped round gear stands on the ground surface with few leg points of its wall sections, aerodynamic shape resilient to strong winds, durable, easy and quick to assemble and disassemble, light and portable to move and transport elsewhere. Gear is comfortable dwelling shelter which is environmentally friendly healthy and made of renewable natural materials such as wood, wool and cotton. The gear has the least environmental footprints and the waste from using gear is non-biodegradable and neutralized easily to the nature, easily to ensure perfect harmony with the nature. With these values, the gear is a unique eco shelter compared to other shelters. The Mongolian gear is called Tanat gear or roof-topped gear, Hanat gear or walled gear, and felt gear, with emphasizing the particular components involved. Moreover, the Mongolian gear has various types with a wide range of different designs. The gear is spread across Central Asia as well as in some Middle Eastern countries, yet the basic structure and designs are kept intact to indicate the endless flexibility of Mongolian gear clearly. Mongolian people consider the Mongolian gear is designed based on the universe model and does incorporate a variety of symbolic meanings representing astrology, astronomy, time and directions, and matter elements. Gear canvas can be made with the different designs from simple to heavily decorated with colors and patterns. Among them, this documentary film will introduce the traditional craftsmanship of common type of the Mongolian gear, widely used nowadays in Mongolia, a so-called standard gear with the simple designs, horton, columned roof poles, along with related customs and symbolic meanings. Traditional craftsmanship of the Mongolian gear. The size of the gear is defined by how many wall sections are used in the particular gear. For example, a gear may have 3 to 20 wall sections and one wall section normally has 12 to 16 head crosses. Gear structure. Mongol gear consists of wooden structure, canvas and ropes with interior furnishing and a heart in the center of the gear inside. Wooden structure The wooden structure consists of rooftop, poles, walls, center posts and the door. Craftsmanship of wooden structure Making walls and poles Walls and poles are made from dried trees in winter. Before timbering, craftsmen should select suitable trees and then make offerings of best food to the sky and nature as traditional rituals.
Then they cut the trees selected for walls and poles. Nigalt, nigalt, nig, utsutsa. Eh, yek, inge hinge inge duwante inge hinge. After cutting trees, the craftsmen prepare logs suitable for walls and poles, with right length and width. First, the craftsmen will make logs from trees with desired lengths and insert the axe in the log to divide in parts to make wall and pole sticks. Then, with replacing the axe, wooden pegs are used to further divide the log at the top and the side of the log. Next, they again divide the split log into more sticks. In this way, they make thin poles with the right size to craft wall or roof poles. Wall sections. Walls are designed to carry the rooftop, poles, and canvas. The structure of grid-type walls is one unique architectural masterpiece of the Mongolian gear to allow wall sections expand, squeeze, assemble easily, as conveniently suited to the nomadic lifestyle. Making wall sections. Grid walls are made of willow or uh, elm trees, but lately from larch mostly. To make wall and roof poles, a shelf post is used commonly. When the apprentice holds on the end of the stick for a wall stick or roof pole, the craftsman narrows the head of the wall stick put on the shelf post. He used a sharp curvy blade called tatorak to shape the head of the wall. After shaping the head, then he shapes rest of the wall stick. Finally, the wall stick is polished and smoothened with a plane to get ready for greeting. Wall ends at the top have a lace, each made of weaved camel hair. First, slim logs are prepared with the right length and put on the ground next to one another. Then, craftsmen measure and mark spots to make holes. Next, they heat the logs by putting them closer to fire and make them curvy with using a special tool. Now, holes are made on spots of the curved logs. After that, craftsmen make a grid with logs by attaching lays through the holes. To do so, they put logs in parallel in one direction first and then put other logs crossing them over. Poles. Poles connect the rooftop and wall sections and carry the felt and cotton canvas. Poles consist of single logs with the same size and length and have three parts called head, body and bottom. Each pole has a cylinder shape with a narrower rectangular head. Making Poles. When the apprentice holds on the end of the stick for a un, the craftsman narrows the head of the wall stick put on the shelf post. He used a sharp curvy blade called tatorg to shape the rectangular head of the pole. After shaping the head, then he shapes rest of the un. First, craftsmen decide at which end of the log the pole head should be made. After making the head, craftsmen craft the other part. All poles must have the same size, and thus it is important to measure and craft poles delicately. Rooftop The rooftop is the slightly dome-shaped round frame sitting on the top ends of poles, which regulates lightning and air conditioning of the gear. The 
The rooftop has several types, including saralchung, sarhinrung, huzufchung, horal, ojum, and etc. Crafting Horton. Town consists of two key components called hurt or well, hure or frame, and dark, which are separately designed and made. Based on design drawings, different parts of town are made from wood pieces. Making town frame. It is convenient to make a compound tarn from dry pioneer trees. To make a single piece of the tarn frame, first you should put a design cut on wooden board and then saw it along the cut line. The compounded tarn frame often has two layers, main and additional. The main frame has holes to hold rectangular headed roof poles and while additional frame. When cutting frame pieces, it is important to also accommodate joints and connections. A craftsman shave and polish frame pieces before gluing and assembling all pieces to make the frame ready. After that, the frame should be compressed together by using a special tool and put aside to allow glues dry. Next, the basic frame will be ready yet needs more polishing and shaving. Then, when the additional frame is glued and attached to the main frame, it is important that joints of two frames should be covered with one another. Additional reinforcements are made from wooden packs which joins two frames together. To install wooden packs, first a few holes should be made vertically on the two-layered frame to make the frame ready. The ton frame is polished and shaved once again with a special plane. Then the craftsman makes holes on the outside of the frame which hold the rectangular head of poles. First he needs to measure and draw rectangular holes depending on the number of poles and then make holes which also should accommodate the slope angle of poles by using wood chisel. Next, eight rectangular holes are be made inside the frame ring. These holes join poles connecting the frame and the inner ring of the ton. After making these poles called dark, the ton frame is ready. Crafting ton well. The inner small ring of the ton is called well. First. Four pieces of the ring frame are made putting cuts on wood boards. Then the inner crosses are made. All the parts are glued and assembled by their pins and sockets. Crafting Ton Dark There are usually eight dark poles connecting author and inner ring frames of ton. It is also possible to have more dark in the back side of the ton. The main function of dachs is to carry weight of Urch, a rooftop cover made of felt canvas. Dark poles are made from suitable wooden boards by using cuts and curvy hand saw. Then dachs should be shaved and polished nicely while ensuring two ends to be jointed. Assembling Tom to assemble ton components, inner and other ring frames and dark poles, first craftsmen put two wood posts on the frame in parallel. Then they put the inner frame well in the center of the frame on the two parallel posts. After that, they attach dark poles to both inner and other frames glued. The compounded ton is ready before polishing and shaving one last time. Door. The door of the gear is a wooden structure consisting of both door frame and door serving as the entrance and exit of the gear. It also connects a circular shaped wall sections at the front of the gear. 
In ancient times, the Ged dwellers used animal skins and felt curtain as a door until they invented a wooden door used in modern days. The door step is called bossok and the upper horizontal part of the door frame is called totok. Mongolians respect them both. Crafting the door. The door frame has the difference of consisting four or six parts. Sometimes the two sides frame parts are made of two boards each, which called a six-part door frame, while sides are made of one board each in the case of a four-part door frame. First, the door frame is made of basok, totok, and two side parts called koi. Then the craftsmen use cuts to make parts of the door to saw and shave each section with relevant pins and sockets. To assemble the door, its frames and panels are glued and attached with one another by their joint in sections on the inside part. Then the door frame and door are attached with pinches. The totok, the upper section of the door frame, must have holes to hold the roof posts. Center posts or baran. There are two center posts to carry the rooftop, torn firmly and evenly. Post heads are a bit of curvy and T-shaped to be attached to the circular tom. A post consists of post head, body, and wings. The heat of the post should be defined with the golden ratio to the door heat. Crafting Baran First, craftsmen prepare cuts of Baran sections each. Then they make the sections by sawing and shaving with relevant tools. Baran heads have concave sockets for gluing and jointing the body. Then, two wings should be attached to both its head and body with relevant concave or convex jointing sections. Center posts get ready. Painting and patterning tom, roof pose, door, and baran. Before painting, the ready-made rooftop Roof posts and center posts should be polished well with sandpaper. First, the base color paints is painted and dried well before the primary color paints painted consistently. In case these components are patterned with different colors, pattern designs are prepared on paper and made holes along pattern lines with a sharp oval. Then the pattern design and drawings is put on the gear component. Using powder, wrapped in cotton fabric, the patterns are transcribed on the component. After that, patterns are painted with a suitable color and the patterns are highlighted with darker and lighter colors to contrast the main surface color. Finally, the boundaries can be clarified with white color once more. All patterns and colors signify Mongolian artistic and cultural meanings and express manifestations of fine arts and features. In Mongolia, Oyunkiring or melodic baroque patterned decoration of gear is popular and becoming more common. Shunkalkitikshik Cutters to 
Тэхмэтлэнгээр тор өдөрж байгаа хэдэн сумууд нь Гэрийн матны дээд зэргийн суулбар үнтэй уян ирэлж болдог. Аа ийм гэрийн мат үлдэвэрлэдэг. There are traditions to partly and fully have the gear components and coloring is optional. Canvas The wooden structure of the gear is covered with felt cover made of sheep wool. Gear canvas consists of felt roof cover, felt wall sheet, waterproof canvas, white author, and inner canvas. Traditional felt making. Gear felt cover is made of sheep wool. First wool is cleaned by fluffing with thin sticks. Felt making is usually collective work by a neighboring community. To start felt making, the mother felt remained from the last felt making of the last year is rolled out on the ground to be used as base for the new felt. Then the cleaned new wool shall be lined on the old felt and soaked with water in small drops. Both the old felt base and new wool shall be folded and rolled up tightly round a pole. Making canvas. Gear felt cover consists of felt roof, felt wall sheet and rooftop cover. Making felt roof cover. Felt roof cover called devir is put over roof poles. To make felt roof cover, first felt are rolled out on the ground and the peg is hammered on the middle of one end of the felt as marking the center of the rooftop ton. Then a length of the ton radius is missed from the peg and cut out the half circle from the felt. After that, from the circular end of the felt, a length of roof poles is measured to different directions and a big circle is drawn to mark the lower end of the felt roof cover. Based on design cuts, felt roof cover will be cut out from the felt. Then felt parts are attached by sewing with camel wool yarns. Edges of the felt roof cover should be sewn in order to keep the shape intact. This way, the felt roof cover is ready now. Making felt wall sheet. Whole wall sections are covered with felt wall sheet called torak. Felt wall sheet is made several sheets of felt and attached with one another by sewing with camel wool yarns. The tailor will cut out three to four small triangles from one side of the wall felt sheet, and then she sew the open cut edges together, which will create shoulder to put on the joint of roof poles and wall sections. Finally, border lines of the felt sheets should be sewn firmly to avoid loosening. Making felt rooftop cover. Felt rooftop cover, called urg, is the square-shaped felt cover put over the rooftop in the case of rain, snow, and wind. Urg must have a square shape, and the size should fit right and sufficient to cover the upper end of the roof felt cover devir. Urg is lined with cotton wrap to each side and long ropes attached on four-pointed ends. Making white canvas. There are two layers of white canvas, author, and inner canvas on both sides of felt cover. Canvas protect felt cover and also make gear look more exquisite. On the green field, the snow white gear with bright red roof top looks very original and creates a spectacular manifestation of nature and architectural combinations representing nomadic lifestyles of Mongolia. When making white canvas, tailors fold the roll of white cotton fabric with the length of roof poles several times. Mongolians tie gear components with weaved animal hair rope bands and leather ropes together. For example, gear belts, ropes attached to canvas and rooftop, 
wall belts and laces, rooftop cover robes. These rope bands are made of weaved horse, camel, of yak hair, as well as animal hides. Ropes are made through hand weaving. First using cartridge, a single yarn is made, and then two yarns are weaved by hand together. Several ropes are attached together, hand sewing to make wide belts are used to tie around the gear. Also ropes are attached to certain components, while canvas edges are also straightened firmly by attaching ropes by hand sewing. Building a gear While assembling a gear, first the tarn shall be put at the center of the place to rack the gear and the wall sections are opened up starting from the right side of the door with the rotation of clockwise while lacing end of the wall sections together with the rope bands. Mongolians usually place the door of the gear to the south that is also related with the wind direction blowing, usually from the north or northwest in Mongolia. Two ends of the wall sections are attached to the door frame with also rope bands. Then the two center posts or bands are attached to the rooftop and erected upright in the middle of circular wall sections assembled already. There are four ropes attached to the four sides of the rooftop that these ropes are attached to the wall sections. Then few roof poles are installed at various sides of the rooftop to balance it firmly and to make the center lines of the front of the rooftop with the door at one line facing to the south. Finally, other white canvas is placed over also starting from the right side of the door clockwise. Then two parallel lines of the rope belts are encircled the gear and attached to each side of the door frame tightly. The belts hold all canvas layers tightly to the wooden frame. Culturally, any actions to disturb the gear structure are prohibited strictly. Finally, the rooftop cover, Uruk, folded in the middle, making a triangle shape, shall be placed over the rooftop halfway, allowing light through the front half of the rooftop, and ropes attached to its pointed ends are tied to gear belts at the sides and the back. The Urg is covered fully in case of rain or snow. Now the gear assembling is finished. In summer, only one layer of felt cover is used, while two to three layers of felt covers in winter time. Now furniture items are placed inside the gear along the wall sections according to a custom order. The floor base of the gear is divided in two parts including outer, right and left sides, heart center and entrance used each for specific purposes. These divided space have special traditional customs. For example, the right side is for a male host while the left side for the female hostess of the family. This also represents balanced equality and happiness of the married couple. Mongolians usually put the heart in the center of the gear and respect the fireplace as the foundation of the family. Interior furnishings are crafted as suitable to nomadic lifestyle as durable, portable and easy to assemble and disassemble as a result of craftsmanship designing and usage in hundreds of years. After building and furnishing the gear, the hostess makes the new tea and offerings to people who helped build the gear. In case of a brand new gear, a celebration feast is held to bless the new gear. Celebration of a new gear 
Mongolians have a tradition to celebrate and bless the new year through holding a feast. A local elderly man who knows the feast rituals usually leads the feast, informs its ground rules and appoints the serving waiters before starting the feast. The local artist's phrases the new gear with poetic phrase songs describing the gear structure and craftsmanship qualities and wishes happiness to people who help build the gear and guests too. Moreover, local artists sing long songs with horse-headed fill and other musical instruments and feast guests sing them together and enjoy their time together. Монгол <laughs> In modern days, the Mongol gear conserves its values by striving with environmentally friendly qualities through centuries and migrates along development dynamics. Mm-hmm.